in the week and purchased uh, some amazing pieces. Um, at, uh, so I think there are 15 pieces in this group. Um, first piece is this bracelet. And it's um, a, a stretchy bracelet. Um, gold tone with uh, plastic uh, turquoise colored and red coral colored um, beads and uh, rhinestones. And it is marked, oh, I don't think you can see it, but it, there is a, a, a cartouche right inside this piece. And it took me a while to figure it out, but it, it's Graziano. So this is a Graziano bracelet. Um, I was able to look up look it up online um, found lots of bracelets similar to this not identical to it so and, and I'm wondering if it's a Graziano knockoff or else it's such a new piece that there's just no pieces online um, to go with that piece I picked up some earrings that matched fairly well where are they ah So I picked up these big uh, pierced earrings, not marked, but again, they have the uh, gold tone, turquoise uh, colored stones and sort of a purpley uh, faceted stone in the center. But I thought uh, if you were going to coordinate some jewelry, that wasn't such a bad idea to put those together. A big piece that I also got um, is this lovely uh, snowflake obsidian uh, disc or pendant with the uh, two strands of snowflake obsidian chips. Um, and each piece that I bought averaged about a dollar and a quarter by the time you got 40% off. So, and I know what I paid, I know what I paid for some Snowflake Obsidian beads last year, just for a strand, one strand. Um, yeah, this can't compare, but a, a beautiful piece. Um, I don't know if I'll leave it the way it is or, or take it apart and reuse the, the chips and the pendant. This I had to pick up. It's a sterling, sing, it's a sterling silver, a uh, school ring from Bathurst Heights Collegiate, which is Toronto area, from 1977. It, it is, you know, got a green glass stone. It's got some initials on one side. Um, it is marked sterling inside. Um, I just um, thought that it was so sad that someone got rid of their high school ring. I still have mine. I won't wear it, but uh, for a dollar and a quarter, um, just for the silver value, um, if I ever run across somebody who's missing their 1977 ring, I'll uh, let them know I have one. Then I picked up this uh, gold tone um, bouquet of roses pin. Uh, great uh, detail. There's these lovely sort of I don't know what these are. They're not they're not really leaves. There's the leaves. There's the roses. This is some kind of pod. There's a couple of those. Um, anyway, really nice, beautiful textural pin. Has the Y-shaped or V-shaped uh, clasp on the back, safety clasp. And it's not marked in any way, but I thought it was uh, quite lovely. Uh, I've gotten to the point where with this sale, I'm just buying... Uh, things not necessarily for me to wear, um, but just because they're lovely and I, I, I like to have them in my collection. It's a slippery slope, isn't it, once you start getting interested in jewelry? Um, this pin I picked up, and I didn't, I, I didn't look uh, at the back, really. I just looked at the front, and it um, kind of looks like a, a trillium flower, which is our provincial flower here. Um, but on the back, when I got home, I realized that it was marked uh, Bon Boyd and it's uh, 925. So the marking is in here. It's very small. Um, I have some other Bon Boyd jewelry. I haven't uh, looked them up recently, so I, 
Oh, fumble fingers today. I haven't looked them up recently, um, but uh, I'll have to refresh my memory. Maybe I can put some details on the screen for this video. Um, then I picked up this silver pin, sort of, I don't know what you call it, triangles, dimensional, uh, silver tone, shiny on one section, and brushed or uh, etched silver on the other. And this piece is signed. It's a Coro piece, and I don't know if you can see Coro here, but um, I'm finding more and more Coro pieces uh, as I do my jewelry hunting. So that's quite nice. One of the few silver pieces I found. Um, I picked up this gold toned watch um, simply because it's a Timex watch and it's an old watch. It's a wind up watch. It's not working at present. It's an excellent shape. Um, I may use the components. It's really lovely if you take the clock part out and use those in steampunk jewelry or whatever and then put a photo under the glass and because the glass is usually has a uh, is usually cut so that there's a magnifying effect you can even with a very small photo you can uh, have quite a nice little bracelet so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this but you know it wasn't a dollar and a quarter wasted I didn't think um, and I found these um, tiger eye earrings so these are modern earrings um, with the tassel there we go so tiger's eye earrings um, lovely faceted tiger's eye um, and I could certainly take the tassels off if I wanted to but for now I'll leave them the way they are I'll see uh, what they're like to wear um, they're not too long and the uh, tiger's eye goes with so many different things um, I found this pair of earrings and normally I'm not attracted to this in this style I guess you would say um, as anything uh, that I would wear but I guess if I was getting going out for a really posh event I might wear them um, but my grandson was able to tell me that he could read that these are Dorlan, D apostrophe O R L A N, uh, made, and that's a, a Montreal manufacturer from here in Canada. And I have collected a few other Dorlan pieces, so uh, they're in excellent shape. I'm not sure what the age is. Uh, definitely, you need to have the um, clips because they're fairly hefty in weight, but. Um, uh, well made and uh, I guess very wearable for the right person at the right time. Then I picked up this bracelet and I'm, I'm going to go back because I think there is an unmarked necklace that would go with this bracelet. It's got little rhinestones, um, pale peach uh, plastic stones it's a gold tone bracelet I love that that the open sort of the delicate figural work there um, this is the back of, and it is signed on the clasp coro again so another coro piece I don't know if somebody um, collected a lot of coral jewelry and and bought it but it's signed right there on the on the clasp coro um, so a nice delicate Kit bracelet. I'm going to go back, as I said, and see. There's a necklace sort of like this, and I'll take them in and see. Maybe it's an unsigned coral necklace, and I might pick it up just for the matchy matchy. That's me, matchy matchy. Um, I picked up this pair of um, clip earrings. Um, they are just pink. They're kind of dirty. They need some cleaning. Um, uh, just you know pearl faux pearl colored beads um, with a faceted bead and some bead caps in the center they are marked Japan right here and uh, these are the kind of earrings I used to buy and then take apart and repurpose 
20 or 30 years ago. Um, so I thought that these were pretty enough that I would uh, clean them up and hang on to them as a, uh, just an example of what I used to, uh, used to work with. Um, this was an unusual thing. It's um, marked hazelaid.com. Yeah, I'm not sure if you, how well you can see that. Um, and it is a an amber, a 14 inch amber string. It has uh, the uh, barrel clasp hidden in the back. And it is sold, it was sold known, known as teething jewelry. Um, knotted between each piece, it's the, the creamy colored amber and the, uh, you know, dark butterscotch or burnt sugar amber. Um, and it has care instructions, you know, remove when bathing to keep shampoos and other products from coating the amber to clean it. Use a soft flannel cloth, dampened with clean and lukewarm water. And it says that uh, amber releases healing oils. Um, when it warms with the body's temperature, um, the oils are supposed to contain succinic acid, which is then readily absorbed into the skin and into the bloodstream. Amber is known to relieve headaches, migraines, teething pain, reduce inflammation of the throat, ear, and stomach, and to fight infections and respiratory de uh, diseases. Now, I'm not sure um, how true that is. I've, I've worn amber jewelry all my life, but it's usually um, not, the amber is not usually directly against my skin. Um, but it would be interesting to do some more research and, and see um, how true that is. I know that my husband's grandfather always said that you would should dissolve a piece of amber in pure alcohol and then rub your sore joints with that alcohol and the the amber somehow transformed the alcohol so um who knows it, it, you know if it works it works if it's uh works by suggestion uh, as a placebo hey it works <laughs> but you know for a dollar and a quarter i got a nice little strand of uh amber with a nice clasp certainly um it could be reused or you know incorporated into another piece of jewelry if needed uh, there's no way it's going around my neck at 14 inches, um, but I suppose you could, if you had a small enough wrist, you could wrap it around your wrist. I don't know. Anyway, it's amber. I love amber. Uh, I, and that's my reason. <laughs> so I'll put that back in there. Um, I also picked up a couple of rings. Nothing special. Um, this one's probably glass. This is probably glass, too. Um but I don't have any uh, gold rings and I was going to try wearing rings on other fingers. Um, usually it bothers me. I get itchy fingers, but I thought, hey, you know, for the price, this is kind of like buying bubblegum machine rings, only they're a little uh, higher quality. And then this piece, I, I, I'm very proud of. This piece has all of the markings that you would think leads you to something really special 925 t and co uh 1837 and then i'm inside tiffany and company 925 and then the brass one and the gold tone one or um and i am pretty convinced i'm totally convinced i'm not just pretty i'm totally convinced that these are fake um the Tiffany & Co. on the inside is the giveaway. Everything else looks pretty good and feels nice and smooth and centered and so on. But if it, where it's marked Tiffany & Co. on the inside here, the T and the C should be larger letters than the Iphany and the O of Co. So um, that's the giveaway. The other giveaway is that I found two sites selling these for $30 or $29.95 as... Tiffany and Company clone or Tiffany and Company repo, a repro uh, jewelry. And uh, all the real Tiffany stuff is not three interlocking bracelets, but is only two. Usually um, a silver and gold, or if there are three, then they are three solid silver bands. 
So definitely for a dollar and a quarter, I got my first fake Tiffany and it's uh, something to use as, <clears throat> excuse me, a, uh, a standard, I guess, for judging other Tiffany pieces. Not that I expect to find very many. So that's my uh, uh, 15 pieces from my Friday 40% uh, off at the Salvation Army Thrift Store. And I'll be back with another video of my pieces from my Saturday visit. Thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed watching and have a great day.